One of the key questions asked by Jordan Peterson that started him down his path of kind of sort of Christianity that so far hasn't been addressed meaningfully by anybody he has ever debated. See, what happened in, in Jordan Peterson's life is, is not that dissimilar from what happened in mine. He started investigating some of the same things that I was reading. Uh, Nietzsche, Dostoevsky, Jung, amongst a bunch of other things. And he started asking penetrating questions about the nature of the society we live in. And one question started dogging him in particular. And it's what led him to his current condition as a kind of sort of Christian. Can you have a sex successful society without any sort of transcendent morality? Is that even possible? Is that even achievable? Now that's a very different question. Does God exist? Even if you're an atheist, you can recognize, I don't believe God exists. Okay, fine. But you do recognize that a legal code our inalienable rights as spoken of in the De Declaration of Independence. Most of the universalist ethos that you in fact agree with and someone like Sam Harris deeply agrees with. Most of the things that you say this is morally correct and this is right and we as a society must all assent to this or we are in trouble. Most of those morality, those ethical codes, that that transcendent morality is based at least theoretically on the idea that there is in fact a transcendent morality. Now whether it exists or not is irrelevant. Can you have a successful society without that ideal? That's relevant. That's important. That's what started to dog Jordan Peterson. That's why he talks about cultural relativism, relativ relativism all the time. Go listen to most of his debates. Cultural relativism will come up once or twice. It's a go-to thing of his. It's a pet. It's a pet peeve of his. Why? Because he sees it as profoundly destructive. And in a certain sense, morally speaking, it is. Once you start saying these ideals are up for grabs, as are all ideals, that's what you're actually saying when you're a cultural relativist or a moral relativist. These moral morals are up for grabs as are ultimately all morals. Who's to say what's right and wrong, dog? Fine, but you can't run a society off of that. It's one thing to smoke a couple spleefs and philosophize with your friends about that. Yeah, dude, you blow my mind with this stuff, man. Oh, oh bro, it's like, you know, if, if a cannibal thinks it's cool to eat other people, what, who's to say that he's wrong, bro? You're blowing my mind, man. Yeah, I'll pass it over. Yeah, that's what happens. You start <laughs> philosophizing about it. It's fine in the course of a stoner conversation, but you cannot build a successful society on negoti negotiable values. You can't. That's the nihilism that's, that we see plaguing Western civilization. And this is ultimately the thing that anti-theists don't believe me that they have to address, but ultimately, if your, your movement is to take any sort of, is to, is to have any sort of coherence and make any sort of a positive impact past YouTube and get anywhere, you're going to have to really address that for real. Why? Because it's an important thing. So far, nobody has, has given him a real answer. Every debate he's ever been, I've watched almost all of his debates, nobody has ever addressed that for real. And that's a really important question. You say there's no God, but at least Christianity or at least the, the God of the Bible gives you theoretically at least a transcendent moral code for which to base your ethics and values upon. Theoretically. doesn't have to necessarily exist in reality. But you cannot build a society with, with values that are up for negotiation. And expect that society to cohere. That's, that society has to have sacred sets of principles that are bought into by the majority of those people and they need to be shared. Or that society will not cohere. Nihilism is what Nietzsche talked about. Nihilism is what Nietzsche prophesied. I'm, I pointed this out in other videos. I'll point it out one more time. When Nietzsche said, God is dead wasn't the way most people think of it. 
wasn't God is dead, hallelujah, now let's everybody be an atheist and go eat your babies. It's not what he was saying. He was actually troubled by the implications. He was saying, God is dead, Christianity as a rallying point for our society, as a flag under which we were all, which we all buy into, as an organizing principle of, of Western civilization is done. This is, this is bad, people. This is going to get bad. That's what he said. And if you dispute that, read closer. He may have contradicted it in other places. It's irrelevant. It's what he said. It's Nietzsche 101. God is dead, meaning Christianity as an organizing principle of Western civilization is effectively over. And this is not going to be a good thing for our future. Because we need to, more or less people have taken it also from there, we need to, we're going to need to rebuild God. Or we're going to be in trouble. And he predicted the nihilism of the 20th century. And if you don't understand what I mean by nihilism of the 20th century, it's shorthand. It's shorthand for what actually occurred in the 20th century. Communism, Nazism. Millions upon millions upon millions of deaths. Communism, Nazism. That's what it means. Now, the issue at hand that Jordan Peterson asked time and time again, and again, as far as I can tell, nobody has addressed in any meaningful way. Can you build a society without a tr at least theoretically available transcendent set of ideals and, valuables and, and values and sacred, sacred principles? If you're an atheist, listen to this. I get it. You don't think it really exists. You don't think God really exists in the real world. Fine. But can you have a, a society that functions in a deep way, that's lasting, without at least transcend, theoretically true transcendent values and ethics? And this is what he tried to call Sam Harris out on, and in a way was successful, and Sam Harris didn't answer, because Sam Harris is a universalist. Which means he holds some of the, the truths that Christianity points to as true. The value of the individual. Individual rights. The value of, it, of, of, a, of, the, of a human being. That that human being now has rights that cannot be revoked. Those are universalist ethical principles. And they are contingent on, and not, if not you believing in God, at least you believing those are non-negotiable. Do you understand what I mean? It's not necessarily contingent on you believing in God, but they're not up for debate. They are sacred, innumerable, inviolate. If they aren't, they're negotiable. Do you see the problem? Did I spell it out clearly enough for you to understand the problem? If you strip it away, if you strip that, you know, for lack of a better word, I'll use what Peterson used, metaphysical substrate. Yeah, I'm not crazy about it either, but if you strip that metaphysical substrate away, you are going to have to rebuild it with something equally as coherent or equally as valuable and at least theoretically universalist and true, non-negotiably true, irrevo irrevocably true. Because other than that, it's up for debate. And up for debate means the guy with the most power wins the debate in politics. In YouTube, yeah, the smartest, whatever. But in, in actual real-world political power, if, if there's no such thing as a bedrock principle on which you found, found your society on, then that bedrock principle is up for debate, which means the most powerful person decides what the sacred principles are, and God help us all. 
Don, I'm not sure if that was 100% clear, but I'll go back to it again in other videos. That is all for now. Amen.